Hey everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Unapologetically Her. And I am so excited today because I had the pleasure of meeting my guest a couple months ago at the Real World Film Festival. And for today, she's actually my first guest of the new year to kick off Black History Month. Yes! So like, what better person to have than Pat Dylan Moore? Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Because you know what? What is so wonderful is there was a time uh, when Mm -hmm. I wanted to be just like you. And I couldn't because I was reliant upon people having to hire me. Now, I think I speak proper English. However, yes, I do have an accent. But for quote-unquote mainstream media... That was such a no-no. That was, you know, I guess you had to sound like, I love that woman, but you had to be Lisa LaFlam or yesteryear it was Barbara Frum. And now today with the technology we have at our disposal, we can own Mm -hmm. our voices because there's nothing worse then dimming your light and stifling your voice. I'm a product of that girl. Um, And so I am really pleased to be here with you. I feel you. I feel you. I'm not sure that my back broad. When they say my back, my back, my back, it no brock. I might buckle a little bit, but God bless Tiger Bomb. I can hold you up, baby. (laughs) Yes, please do. You you guys already hear just the gems dropping and we're only two minutes ah! in. So before we even get into the episode, please tell us about yourself, your businesses, your social medias, how we can find you and possibly run you a check. This is your time to promote. Um, I am a Pat underscore Dylan underscore more on IG, so that's P-A-T underscore D-I-L-L-O-N underscore M-O-O-R-E. Uh, on YouTube, I have a channel that has three or four things, but when we get into our chat, you'll know why after having it for like seven or eight years, it's so important. And on YouTube, the channel, I think I have 20 followers, if that, but it's D dot mama, D E. D-O-N-M-A-M-A. And at ckut.ca, every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m., my husband, the angel, my beautifully gifted, differently able daughter, DJ Storm, we've been doing a show called Boom Boom Time, where we play the oldies. Old Calypso, old Steel Pan, old Soka, old R&B, soul, disco, funk, and lots of old reggae. When you hear these tunes, you'll remember what you used to look like, how many pounds you wear. Did you have an afro? Who were you with? Are you still with that person? We conjure up memories by playing old mistresses and misters of black music. I just found my new favorite radio station. Mm, Keep going. That's it. If I was any more exposed, I'd be nude. And a girl stopped doing that stuff now. Do you guys see why I was so excited to have her today? This this is definitely giving a no filter conversation, and I'm already living okay. for it. So, my first question for you is: What actually sparked your interest into getting into the entertainment industry? I was that child who was an early reader. I'm first generation Canadian of Jamaican parents. And I remember watching Good Times with little Janet Jackson. And I I think we're the same age, but I could do what she was doing. But you have to remember in the 70s, those of us in Canada, our dream meant that we had to be discovered. And as I got older, 
I was invited to be in a national film board film called Sitting in Limbo. Your mother probably saw it a mm-hmm. million times because if there isn't a place in the world where it played over and over again was Toronto. And I immediately loved the camera. But because it was made, it was alternative drama. It was a very small docu uh, mentary styled with real people living not necessarily their lives, but lives very familiar to them. A lot of improv. Um, mm-hmm. When we were finished, and you name it, every outlet, every media outlet, when the film premiered at TIFF, it was Toronto's Festivals of Festivals in 1985. And it played everywhere. So much so that I even got called to audition for the Cosby Show spinoff. That didn't materialize. However, the behind the scenes of the camera interested me more. And when the applause mm-hmm. stopped, and I, 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 that's a phrase I've been using for a long time because I don't believe that we give young people, and this was my stance in the 80s and now more so where people are becoming um, stars overnight because of the internet or they're influencers. At some point in your yeah. life, you hit that 15 minute of fame, the applause stops. And for many people, they come crashing ta- down, are no longer themselves anymore. And, you know, they can self-destruct. I started getting calls to auditions in Montreal, but everything back then, representation, our role was the mammy. Our role was the maid. Our yeah. role was the the prostitute and living in Canada exactly living so close to that huge place called the USA next door everybody wanted to be the hey man and the jazz talking that sort of stuff and well I just cuss up the casting people and tell them if you cannot equal what it is I just did don't Mm -hmm. call me and the call stopped. I then went into theater. And even then, there was only so many roles that you could do at Black Theater Workshop, which is Canada's oldest black professional, professional theater company. So mm-hmm. I took my favorite book, Jamaica Labrish, by the honor, uh, Honorable Louise Bennett Coverley the grand dam of Jamaica's mm-hmm. theater, who, by the way, Black History Month, she is one of mm-hmm. the earliest women on radio. She was sent to London to do a show with the BBC in the 40s. I took that book and I just spouted her monologues anywhere that people invited me. Now, I wasn't as good as the late, great um, Denise Jones of Jones and Jones here in Toronto. But I was pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then I started to write. And for me, it wasn't fast forward all these years, 30-something years later, 40 years later, that a girlfriend pointed out to me that the Black Caribbean woman's voice is nowhere in media in the landscape. And I guess mm, maybe I I just knew this. So I wrote Slice of Life monologues in the Jamaican vernacular. And I did the domestic, but she was bold. She was empowered. And she did her slant of the world politics, slice of life, dating, because we, our mamas, have a perspective. Mm -hmm. We grew up knowing 
our older Caribbean woman as having a point of view. And that's what I did for a yeah. long, long time. And more media came. I just by mistake, I got into radio at CKUT. And then I was invited to, to apply for station manager. Black History Month again. First Canadian mm -hmm. black radio station manager. Uh, it was called CKLN and then CIUT was Marva Jackson. And then I became mm -hmm. the second, first in Quebec, but second in Canada. And the oh, rest wow. is history. I continued in film, continued in theater, did music. By music, I mean... Mm -hmm. When we'd have our shows, our great entertainers from the Caribbean would come. Why were those shows not covered at all in the Toronto Star and all those various places? Why is it only carnival time or back then that you would see how to make a roti? That did my head in. <laughs> oh, Jesus, have mercy. And all these kinds of things. And so I became a publicist in music uh, because people knew me and mm -hmm. positioning very different things to people, always reminding them that everybody wants to see themselves, see their interests and see um, a bit of their narrative in the mainstream. Yes. And that is problematic, but I think some of you, the things you want to get into, we'll get into that some mm -hmm. more. And so I, I, you know, I got, oh, Lord, what's his name? I'm seeing his face, Coco T. I hear the voice of the rest of man say on Canada AM at that time. Could you imagine you get up and hear a reggae man? This is, you know, sure, much music carnival time had many of them. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, Tony Young did a fabulous job as best he could. But that was still niche. That was cable. But uh, if I could get you on Canada AM, God, I miss that show. Or any, you know, yeah. Globe and Mail, wherever the stories were. I was pushing for that and I've been doing it ever since. And we're, when we talk about the Globe and Mail and Canada AM, we're talking about like these big, prolific platforms. National. Like everybody and their grandma was seeing. Exactly. CMs. And why shouldn't they? Why shouldn't they? Yeah. And if you think about it, when I, you know, Carnival Time, and it's, a, it's still a great platform throughout um, Canada, why shouldn't the Jasons and Macamere Fifi not be represented. Why is everything, you know, you know, bare naked ladies? Props, I like them. I love Gordon Lightfoot. But we need to see the Buffy St. Marie's and we need to see, you know, people like uh, Roma Spencer, who is your thespian of the highest caliber here in Toronto and in Montreal. People like Doggies and Pete Douglas and Puff T and, you know, why, why, why not? Cheryl Baptiste and all of these various people. My daughter, Diva, right? Why can't we see them? And so we keep chipping away, chipping away, but the Lord is a good listener because him give us YouTube. That's it, you know? Well, here's my thing, and I'm going to deviate from my questions for a second because this is something we kind of touched upon when we first met, when we were talking about media in the sense that we gravitate so much to American <laughs> media because we see the representation. But even then, whether it's or even, the even then, must be only just the other day, Shirley Ralph as a Jamaican, and there's, I mean, for sure, uh, oh God, what do you rap her name? Uh, from Trinidad and Tobago. Hip hop. Mm -hmm. Oh God, saucy petite, it'll come to me. But how many mm -hmm. people 
do you hear in the authentic voice over there? For sure, there was Matt yeah. St. Clair, um, Trapper Drum MD, but how many outright Caribbean people do you see over there? And how many of us buy these things? So now when I see they want to sell you all sorts of things when you try to log on and read one of their stories and they want you to subscribe for how much and how much a month, right? Mm -hmm. So I should continue to give you free money. And it's only so often we're seeing our stories. And yet, when our people, let's go right to the meat. Let me talk out the things. I cannot even things, tell you when some of our people get into those spaces. There was mm -hmm. a time journalists could write what they want. But then with media convergence, everything became hierarchical and top down. And, you know, I'm not even sure uh, because I've been away for a bit who in media mm -hmm. gets to cover what they want. And it helps being in Toronto, right? Canada's most yeah. multicultural city, culturally diverse. Um, and I think, you know, it's a damn shame, a real damn shame, Breonna Taylor and George Floyd had to be die with the world watching because we had nowhere to go. We lock up in our house in COVID for some yep. of them to understand. But I believe we're at minute 13 of that 15 minutes of fame. So we need to make hay while the sun shines. But that part is very true. Because if it weren't for COVID, half of the media coverage, that wouldn't have And then you would have That would have got slipped in for the rest of them. Much. You would have seen the... Well, here in Canada, what do you mean? Look, right before <laughs> Christmas, a young man was incarcerated. He should have been let go. There was some sort of snafu. His name, I think, is Niku. Uh, and he didn't get let mm -hmm. out for Christmas. And something happened. And I think, I believe, if I could remember the story, he was pepper sprayed. I And uh, it could be that he had asthma. There was a complication. Dead. Dead. He should have been let out. Yep. Around the 20th or 21st. Judge let him go. But mm -hmm. they didn't, you know, everybody rushed into Christmas. Oh, it's another black boy. Oh, nigga. Well, we'll deal with that after Christmas. Dead. Yep. Dead. So perhaps we don't have people holding down your neck, choking you, and you're crying for your mama, I can't breathe. And maybe not, mm -hmm. the frequency is not there as much. But it took that for people to hear what we have been saying in Canada. They still continue do these oh, stories. Yeah. We're not like the U.S. No, you hide your shit very well. That's all. I see. It's, a, it's fraud. It's fraud. I'm like, I give the U.S. credit. At least they're going to be rude to your face. You see the racism right there. Canada is smiling in your face and do it I behind your back. worse. Worse. Really? Yeah, and what's happening is too many black people in Quebec are jumping up in settler wars. Uh, with this language thing, like, and I tell uh, too many of them, we had no choice in who colonized us. So it's all right if you speak French and we speak English. Those are settler wars. So, you know, uh, it's a divide and conquer, house nigger, feel nigger, bull crap. Oh, God. They, but they seem to have forgotten. A friend of mine said to me, the house nigger, the good ones, were the ones who said, okay, massa is sleeping. It's a good time to run now. Well, I want to see more of yeah. it. You won't be a house nigger. I want to see those ones out. Yeah, exactly. I'll wait. I had a nephew when he was learning to talk. He couldn't say patient. He used to go, I'm patient. I'm patient. I'm still waiting. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We're going to have to talk about after this afterwards because I always thought about, like, do I want to move to Quebec? Do I want to leave Toronto? It's getting expensive oh, over French? here. Oh, I've been speaking French since I was about five okay, years old. Good. Good. That'll yeah. help you. That'll help you. Mm. Right? 
I don't know. I don't know. Um, perhaps it's a it's yeah. It's expensive to live here, but it's it, I guess it's grass is greener, right? You know what? Live in boat. All right. Find some cousin, or maybe I'll find a way to rent you a room and come and check out. Or you know, the good thing, the yeah. only good thing with COVID is that we started to work online and borders disappeared because you could work through the internet, right? But okay. Look here. We always say Canada has a lot of work to do, a lot of undercover work, but a lot of mm-hmm. work to do. by far, by far. So in terms of when we're talking about starting your career in media, because you did say you were actually, you know, actually born here in Canada. So when you see, in a sense, your generation versus my generation trying to get into the field, what advice do you have for us? Well, if you get in, there's so few spaces. Mm -hmm. I've been telling journalists, students for years, do your blog, do exactly what you're doing. Right. Have your podcast. Yeah. Go in and say, I have this many listeners. So you're going with your people right now. Sometimes a lot of people don't like that because they want to feel they gave you something. Because if you go come with your people and you stay with your people, if it's time for you to go, you're taking your people. Right. But I still mm-hmm. think. Uh, and I don't like the phrase side hustle, but I'm going to call it have your own, do your own. Uh, Senator Ann Cools, she was one of those who went to jail for the, um, oh, Lord, uh, Sir George Williams affair uh, where mm-hmm. a fire w- happened on, on the ninth floor of the computer room. And down below were a lot of whites protesting, saying, burn, niggers, burn. She didn't do anything wrong. And because she wouldn't say that she did, she went to jail for three, four months when she was retired, retiring from the Senate. And I asked her, what would you say to someone like me working as a federal civil servant? And she said, make sure you don't want their stuff. Have your own. Oh. Have your own. So I, that's what I would say to you: the the, the blogging, uh, the vlogging, the podcasts, because at least your voice is and a braggle in your mouth, telling you what you can say and how you can say it, and you have a little bit more freedom. Yeah. Um, I've done a little bit of private radio and, you know, it was great. Robert Libman's show on CJD that was back then, Standard Radio. I can't remember what they're called now. I think it's iHeart Radio now. And Mm -hmm. at least I could speak in my authentic space. But how many people have to be doing the code switching all the time, right? And yeah. hence the title of your show, Unapologetically Her, right? So I think if we create more of our spaces, you know, we further dilute the pool. And there are many journalist courses online where, you know, the ethics um, balance and perform in programming, right? Airing both sides, right? Playing the devil's advocate. Learn those things and away mm-hmm. you go. I am so happy that, you know, in addition to the third tier of the Canadian Broadcasting Act, there is a space for campus community radio. So in addition to yeah. that, which is your, that is your campus community radio, and of course CBC being your public, and the IR. I heart, you see the Jamaican, I come out, you see, I'm going to drop the H off of that. Uh, I heart radio is private. Um, mm-hmm. Look at the CRTC rules. Uh, promise of performance. What are you saying? Take your listener 
into account. Know your listeners. You're, you live in community. I mean, podcasting, I don't know what your Google Analytics tell you, but be accessible as much as you can. I'm not saying you have to put yourself out there so trolls can make your life miserable. But what do they mm-hmm. want to hear? What do you want to program for them? And govern yourself accordingly. See, I take off the A off of that, right? You've been unapologetically you. How I you mean, mean, I saw it. Had. I'm here listening to you right now. And I'm just like, I'm here making all these mental notes. Because at first it started as something for fun. But as you're saying it, I'm like, I can see how doing this can to really take it one step further, not just for me and you, but for so many others who are the listening or doing monetize, it themselves. Monetize, monetize, monetize. And if you can bring somebody in, I mean, it's easier sometimes to go at it alone, but maybe it is mm-hmm. that young student in the neighborhood who you want them to learn how to edit, right? Always as you go up, if you turn wrong and push back this and behind you, and draw somebody up yeah. with you. And I mean, you know who you're giving your hand to, right? Mm. Right? Because yeah. not everybody gave yeah, a joke. It's awful, though, but it's the truth. I was lost. I went to Rome when I turned 40 because I wanted to be like my mother, who came from very, very rural Jamaica. And she waited until she was retired to tr- do the Europe thing. And I looked at it. I, maybe I was in my 20s. I can't even remember good. And I said, I want to do that. I'm going to do it at 40. Fast, fast forward to approaching 40. I said, okay, I'm going to go to Rome. I only knew mm-hmm. five words. Made my way to the Coliseum. And I marked the truck that I had to go back up. To get back with your girl gone, take her bride self and stayed in a convent. Anyway, the, the whole problem with the lane is that it had all these twists and turns in it, and I get lost. I see a black woman coming. And excuse me, mm-hmm. excuse me, I had the map, wanted to show her. Eh, eh. My lady get on like such a hog. And yes, do help black people wherever you are. Because they always say when you get rich and switch, right? But yeah. always remember that people are people first. And you will have some hog and goat inside of there as well, right? They're people, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And people can do strange things, right? But do extend yeah. your hand. Believe in the power mm-hmm. of good karma. But don't, well, you know, she passed a lot. Beer bad word me say, send down behind her. Anyways. All the way to Rome to have to cuss up my sister. Whatever. <laughs> and in the end, you know what? It was a nice little old, old Italian white man. He don't speak a word of English. He took me by my arm and walked me to yeah. the convent. So make sure what? you can recognize your allies. Leave yourself open, mm-hmm. right? I'm picturing that then whole yeah, scene in my head. My right African now. girl, not all Africans, because some of them are fabulous. People are people. Cross me off and walk off. I wouldn't spend the time a day. And there's a little whole Italian man will walk me, take me by my arm, link me. Feel sorry, sorry for, for you because it's I get dark. Me one in the place, <laughs> jet lagged, right? I walk me straight to the convent door. This told me, thank God, for hotels. And like now, now. Yeah. We had phone back then, but it couldn't do all where we could do, because at least now you could do the walking thing on, you know, Google Maps. No, it was way, it was a minute ago. <laughs> I'm loving this. <laughs> so I want to take it back because we were talking about representation. Mm-hmm. And then I was seeing a lot of articles up to last year where they're saying there's a, a lack of black female representation and diversity in C- Canadian media. And like you said, from the 70s till now, you were lucky to get mm-hmm. chosen. 
So why is this still a problem? White and woman. Still, yeah, a white woman. I don't know what it is. That sisterhood feminist thing. I, I don't, I, you know, I really didn't have as much problem with men, white men. You understand? I think it was because I grew up as a, no, I really? have no problems hardly ever with them, a white woman. I don't know. I, not all of them, because for sure I have beautiful white women in my life who, sisters, I mean, make some of them bid me quicker than some other people to talk the truth, right? And it sounds like I'm contradicting myself, right? But too many of them. But like you said, you have to know people, people, are, people are people first. first. Thank you. And there's an insecurity yeah. thing. And the there's a film coming out soon, and I think it's called The Myth of the Black Woman. When it has it's theatrical, oh. I'm going to, I, in fact, I'm going to give you the publicist's name because you need to talk to that film woman. But the black magic, the black girl magic thing, I believe. I believe. I remember it from the Right. Film. And I've been told in a job performance evaluation, excellent work, like the administrative stuff I wasn't good at, right? But I've been told that my face in meetings show just how I feel, right? And to the point. Thank you, right? And I don't think I was side eyeing. I, I really don't know, right? Because I really am a jocular person, get on with most people. But I apparently I frighten. And I believe that was it. The white woman insecure thing, right? Uh and it's that thing. It's a different power, and yes, there is the sexual bunny thing where we can be positioned hypersexualized and all of that stuff. But to me, I think there's some of that. I could be wrong. I might get attacked for it. But I'm telling you, it has been a man in my life would give me a bligh more so than a white woman. And it wasn't looking my crutches neither. That's interesting because we always hear, especially when it comes to like, oh, you know, it's the, and it says quote unquote, it's like the white man's world. They control everything. It's a male, white male dominated industry. So for you to kind of flip the switch and be like, no, but it was the white women. People don't come out and say that a 12 years a slave, anybody? 12 years years. a slave, anybody? 12 years. My personal experience. And if particular, because we have that mm-hmm. myth, uh, yeah, well, the, one of the tropes is the angry black woman, but that strong black woman thing frightens the hell out of them. My experience. Mm. I'm going to think, I'm like, let me just reassess all those jobs I've applied to, all those people I've come to contact with, and let me just reevaluate how they actually spoke and mm-hmm. treated me. Worth if you're their <laughs> equal or the you're better. Oh, if you're better, who till mm-hmm. huh? backside in time? Yep. Mm. Oh yeah, I've had all sorts of you know when it's time somewhere you're going to a film festival or it's a particular meetings or this that that and you, you know you fix up yourself, govern yourself accordingly, right? And that has been for me fixing up yourself. I'm a slob. Really, I am, right? But if I'm going to represent, right, girl is mm-hmm. going to, and I'm sorry, there was a ring I have, right? I want to tell you that ring, yeah. it's, it's a big gold ball. And wherever I go, that ring has gotten a person who I needed to talk to to stop and talk to me. That makes, so it is our armor and we work it for us. And, oh, I have to think about this mm-hmm. some more. Well, you go and do your own survey and look at stuff and what have you, but it just is what it is. Yeah, there's a lot There's a lot more pieces to the puzzle yeah, than yeah, we yeah. think. And you have to, you'll see them. You will see them. They have a problem. I, you know, it's only because mm-hmm. I had a, a very bad burnout. Why I'm really not talking about a lot of things. I'm going to be waiting for that book. I'm manifesting Okay, it. good. The micro and macro aggressions. Yep. Real. Real. 
Mm-hmm. And Toronto, I find you have a lot of them, a lot of insecure white women out here. Yeah. Yeah. Because they all want to be the savior and to save you and teach you. And, you know. and when you do good, they I wonder know. how you did that. You know, like, you know, like it has to be Obia, right? Whatever. Go wrong with the damn dirtiness, right? That just too many times. Like, you didn't earn that or you, you, you know, you did not own your smarts. How did you do that? Right? And that's the question all the time. Mm-hmm. All the time. How do you know that? See, as you say that now, I think about my last job. And I'm like, the, like some of the stuff that you're saying, I can see that coming from them. And I'm just like, I didn't take it in at first. But as you're saying it, I'm like, no, we've definitely experienced this. The last 18 months and even right before COVID, I was mm-hmm. working with seniors because we're trying to get them to write their narrative. And this was yeah. where my girlfriend told me that the Black Caribbean voice, the woman's voice, is absent in the Caribbean landscape. And so we developed a project and we were targeting the seniors. We had probably three or four men, but it's predominantly women. And some of them just retiring. Tired. Mm-hmm. T-Y-A-D. Tired. And do not want to go back into spaces. Because yeah. they brought it. We show up, we represent, we do it. We try to speak with the authoritative voice. And I cannot tell you the amount of times I have said, why don't we blah, blah, blah. And you're not heard. And then just another white woman says it. And then all of a sudden, let's be. Let's do it. I, you know, and there's always perhaps another person who I've had this conversation with. At the meeting, and we yep. I make four. Or they don't want to hear from you because you have the expertise. But as soon as the mm-hmm. meeting is over and you go back to your office, I cannot tell you how much one, 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 they come to ask you what it is you thought. Because I stopped talking after a while, and that led to my burnout. Yeah. Just up, right? And I'm a talker, so just leave it. But yet you will not ask me in the actual meeting, but you want to know, come when nobody could see you, to come pick my brain mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. ask me. And what I say to young and then people, take your- here's what I'm going to tell you people. When that happens to you mm-hmm. in corporate spaces, you write the person in an email, CC or BCC yourself or CC your boss. Thanks for passing by. It was nice to catch up after the meeting. As I said, here is what I think and send it because you need to document your shit. You didn't know that trick. You're at work and if you feel they're surveilling you, or they're taking you mm-hmm. credit for your work or what have you. When you respond to your boss, you BCC your Gmail. An old dog, an old hoe tell you that's how it's done. Don't wait for them to fire you or walk you to the door and cut off the access on your email. Because they don't want you. Some of them don't. And some of them genuinely do. Mm-hmm. It is what it is. Is it going to change? I don't know. But I really do think more and more spaces, and if they don't want to cede space to us, just go on the outside and do your thing. Yeah. Or, you know, you sit down with um, that person at work and declare, I'm involved in this, that, 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 and this. Right? And make sure they know I'm coming in with this. Own your smarts. They're terrified of us. Terrified. 
Mm. All when you break. Look here, it's all when you're broken and you can't break because the, the strong black woman, a lot of them are dead. Right? Yep. But even in death or when you're silent, scares the hell out of them. I'm like having like a whole flashback moment right now. Breathe. Wow. Do meditation. Do meditation. Take that 60 yep. seconds before the meeting. One nostril. Put it out. Deep breathe out through your mouth. When the village mm -hmm. meditates, go online. That's a black uh, meditation space. Um, I love headspace as well. But take that five minutes because it's dirty out there. Corporate world especially. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not nope, for the week. Nope, nope, nope. Mm -hmm. And stop playing this ageism game. Because everything is for the youth Ooh. now. Why is that? Because they want to get rid of institutional memory. Be strategic. You need to be yeah. part of more intergenerational stuff. We as a people, we revere and still go to our elders. All this thing about, mm -hmm. oh, man, get out of the way. Seed space for me. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's some white people bullshit. Don't do it. Don't do it. Careful. Careful. Now, my ladies and some of the gentlemen out there, I hope y'all are taking mm -hmm. notes. This, these, are, these are gems for everybody, no matter what field you're in, whether it's media mm -hmm. or not. These are things to take yeah, away right now. Project management. Document everything. Date and time. Yep. Write it back. Go back. Make a little note of yourself. Keep your diaries. Right? Soon as you get back to your desk, write it down, write it down, write it down. Because memory fails. Mm -hmm. so if you got to call some people on some stuff, BCC yourself, yeah. let them see. Right? If you ever call to account, the minute the meeting finished at 4, 4 10, before you're going to take that smoke outside, do that quick email to yourself so that the date and the timestamp is there. See, we talk about, in a sense, like how to, in a sense, save your work and these kind of things. But we always see there's still a lot of problems going on behind the scenes. So whether you work for the institutions, whether you work on set, or if you don't, how can we still, you know, put forth the efforts to make that change and increase the representation? Because I feel like a lot of people be like, well, I'm not a part of this, so it doesn't affect me. I don't know. I, I find your tribe. Your collective read everything and that's a huge problem as well and that problem is, is is that you need to understand what is a story what is the narrative here right so you can pivot yeah. and have a broader sense of what stories can be Right, do your homework. People need I read everything. Read the Harlequin romances, me even know if them still exist. Read everything <laughs> and find humanity in everything that is reading. Yes, I'm all I read black this, black that, but I read plenty of white people things too. I just finished mm -hmm. I Got just finished over. fair. Mm -hmm. Lots of narrative there. Lots of narratives there. All right? Read everything. Study the stories. Right? Read the industry playback. Read all of those. Kife Kwa is the French equivalent in Canada. Right? Read all of those yeah. things. The Economist. Read everything. Read the financial pages and put the black spit on it. And if you can, hold people accountable. This diversity and inclusion wave, because the thing they're doing now, especially in Quebec, you are not a, the right fit. And unfortunately, the government of Canada is complicit in that crap. 
you are not the right fit. What is that? Of course we're not the right fit. Nobody is. Stop it. No one likes to get rid of power, you know. Create your own power. Go in mm -hmm. with your own powers. Right? Be bold. And so I see it from my little Falcub. Mm. I'm so happy I met you that day. I'm so happy we're having this conversation because I'm really just here soaking it in. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's been a long time that we have been do it going over and over and over. And, and, and that's the thing you have to remember. The fights that we had, 2025 mm -hmm. day and co cultural appropriation. Then I see cultural appropriation just pop up the other day. And I was going, but wasn't that the aid? Yeah, and it's going to keep like bell bottoms. You see, every so often, bell bottoms like come man. back, right? And afros come back and everything. And the Lieutenant Uhara black, black face down eyebrows, they're back. Right? Keep note of it. Yep. Become a trendsetter. I really don't know how we're going to do it, but I think we need to populate the, two, the spaces with our stories. And we need to share properly and start using all of the platforms given to us correctly and be seen as sharing all sorts <laughs> of things and... Yeah, the, the funny out of order memes are fine. I love them, love them, love them. But share and share each other's work, right? So if you yes. see I'm doing something, you know, share it. And I see you doing something. I'm going to share it, right? I feel like that's one thing with this generation. I've, there's a lot of selfishness. Well, once I'm there, you can't be well, there either. Because there's still a lot of that token one black person, right? And the <laughs> hunger and the greediness. and uh, People are what? People first. Right? Start yeah. sharing somebody else's stuff, right? Not only look at your... And I'm trying, right? Uh, and that's because I don't really mm -hmm. understand... IG too much. Well, I will let you look at my IG. I'm going to let you in my private IG, right? Yes. It cannot all be a pictures of you. Like, what are you saying with the platform? Right? And we're not mm -hmm. homogeneous either, right? Be seen as saying and advocating for many, many things. Right? And save some. Yeah. That man had a great, great song. <laughs> You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. You never count your yeah. money. When you're sitting at the table, there'll be time enough to count them. When the dealing's done, keep some of it underneath here for a rainy day. But mm -hmm. in all of that, don't lose your mental health. Because they were mad, you know. Of you course. Take time for you. And if you have to talk to an, uh, uh, what is it, a therapist, talk to the therapist. Or if it's your best friend, because you know how we sisters do. Do it. And if you need mm -hmm. to go away, do it. Right? Go take that little notebook and sit down in a restaurant by yourself. By yourself and write. Maybe it's not even that. Maybe it's the community gym. You bought yourself the good croissant. Yeah. Right? Uh, and just sit. <laughs> yeah. Because it's going to get uglier when the 15 minutes of fame is over. Now, see, I want to... I might kind of counter counteract your point right now. Because we talk about let's mm -hmm. make our own platforms, right? Let's pave our own way. But... Does this always help to solve the problem that we're facing? Do you think that maybe sometimes we should stay, you know, stay in the workplace and slowly work our way up to make a difference from within? Should we always no, try to step um, out? If you got it in you to fight some more, sure. Mm -hmm. I fought until I, I got sick. So now I have to leave it to other people to fight, right? Yeah. If you got it in you, but that's keep your side hustle. 
Right? So if you got to go, yep. you're not re, you know, don't make me over. Right? You have something on the side. Mm-hmm. Diversify yourselves. I'm, I'm just taking it all in. I don't even have a response for you. I'm just soaking all this knowledge in. And this is why I say I love this podcast, why I love interviewing people, because letting people like you speak your truth, tell us what it really is. You're not sugarcoating it. You've been in this game and I for have, a minute. I'm and this telling is you, and a half, child. <laughs> Yeah. I'm about five seconds in. <laughs> Maybe <three. laughs> you know, come, but it's like the relay. That's no problems passing yeah. the baton to you, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Who's the next person? Always remember upon whose shoulders you stand. I remember those whose shoulders I stand upon. Right. Keep, I yes. mentioned one, Denise Jones, right? Ayanna Black, right? There's so many black women here in Canada and those in the States. And, Absolutely. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Now, we spoke about this earlier, but I kind of want you to reiterate how can we support the next generation and preserve the legacy of those who came before us? If you can. And let's say, I don't know if I have a product or service that I can advertise on your podcast. I think Mm -hmm. some of the money is we don't really need to buy uh, the red bottom shoe. Sometimes it's some money. Right here, here, young lady, here. Take this, buy some ads. And I think not only... In Black History Month, do we call upon our heroes, you know, Gene Augustine, uh, uh, Denim Jolly for men out here. Um, there's just so many people. They call upon them often. Mm-hmm. I, I, I said it earlier. This thing where, okay, they're old and you put them out to pasture. There's a, a, a wonderful artist. Oh, Malik Agafor. I I can't pronounce it very well, Mm -hmm. but he does AI digitally um, created black people on the runway, fashion runway. You've seen the pictures. I think uh, I can't. uh, A G E. B F E R, I think, is his surname. Look at what he did with the mm-hmm. elderly when they have a lot of juice uh-huh. left in them. Right? Just mm-hmm. go AI black artist Malik. Google him. This thing yeah. where you put, put white people, you put your elders away. No. No, that is not who we are as a people. Well, it's no you're you drawing from them. It's no you take up your cameras, videotaping them, taking pictures, writing the notes down. Instead of bawling in the funeral. Yes. Oh, God, oh. You can't even write a proper eulogy for some people in your own family because you have not taken the time to ask. It's good to study book, it's but true. sometimes study the people in your midst, right? And yes. if you see that young girl, right, recommend her. Sometimes you don't even have to tell the person that you're recommending them. Just do it and say, check that girl, Mm-mm. right? We need to do yeah. that. More than one pig can eat at the trough, you know. Exactly. Everything, oh, it's oversaturated. No, you know, I want to gatekeep and keep, keep it for myself. I, you know, I'm in this room. I'm not going to mention their name. Not everywhere like, you go, you have to bring a whole posse with you. But sometimes yeah. you can. When you know that person, you know who that person and is. You know they're deserving. There are you know some they people who, especially if they're black. I tell, yes. Hi, hello. Don't go up in there and embarrass me because I'm, you know, 
But there's some people you don't yeah. even have to do that with, right? And you know you have to call. By the way, I no do that. They they already know. Give the people them their flowers, but give some the young people and old people some seeds. You know how many people came here and said they weren't staying and end up in some dead end jobs. They're now retired. You know we looking good, and, mm -hmm. and by the grace of God, some of we feeling damn good, right? But they, a good amount yeah. of them have a good 25 years, 30 years before. Give them old people some seeds as well. Spread it around. Like, mm -hmm. your tribe. Pick your tribe. Yeah. I, that's the only thing I could tell you. I always say you're never too young to start. Mm -hmm. You're never too old to start. There's some people who are just now, like we mentioned earlier, Shirley Ralph at, what, 64 She's been doing this how long? And she's now just getting mm. that credit she deserves. 64. She's about to open what? Do the national anthem, the black national anthem at the Super Bowl. She's now getting all these mm. awards and nominations. Don't don't count. Like you said, the ageism. Don't count and them out because of their age. Down, like in my case, I am now getting back up. There was a saying behind mm -hmm. Pierre Elliott Trudeau. I mean, it's too sure sometimes about the, the sun, right? But anyways, you see, now that I am reclaiming my voice, just watch mm -hmm. me. You know, see oh. the power done. <laughs> Look here. You st just, I still got two other mind. questions for you. I'm going to keep care your show. You can go over with CBC. The board would have closed us. <laughs> and you see why it's important oh, to have long. your old platform. We chat long, that's so we stay. But look here, I'm, I refuse to cut the gems. I am not. Mm -mm. Give them to me. Now, I want to talk about because this is how I met you originally, was because of the screening mm. for Dear Jackie. So, for those who have no idea what this film is all about, Please tell us about it, the importance about it, the, the importance of it, and where can we watch it? Oh, God, I feel so bad because right now I'm seeing the director's <laughs> face, I guess because I'm tired and I've left Quebec. Hey, Ari, mon ami, je m'excuse. <laughs> je suis en, en vacances et ma tête et je casse. Bon. J'oublie tous mes choses, mon ami. Henri Pardo <laughs> did a love letter to D Dear mm -hmm. Jackie, and he creates a visual uh, comparison between the black community or what the uh, whites were doing in Jackie Robinson's time and the modern day black community today. And not everything was solved. Now, see, we're good. We had Jackie Robinsons here in the 40s. No, but it ain't so good, all right, after all. No. And I get to talk to Fonyami, who is part of CRAR, C-R-A-A-R, I think it is, CRAR, and my nephew. My nephew had the opportunity to live in Chicago during stop and frisk. And he didn't get us stopped as many times as he did in a one year calendar period in Montreal, Quebec. Mm -hmm. And there are many other stories there. And so it is going to stream on CBC Gem on the 5th mm -hmm. of February at 9 p.m. Wonderful film. A good visual poem to a throwback to yesteryear and to today. Mm -hmm. And you'll cry. That's all I'm going to say. All right? Wink, wink. You'll cry. Because <laughs> when I watched that, for the, because I believe I came in part way because I came from work. And when I came to see it, I'm like, okay, somebody tell me when this is coming on again. Because there's so many things in that film. I'm like, oh, this existed? This happened? Me dear, oh, ma. No. no, your history. Don't let nobody tell you your own history. Exactly. 
And you cannot be knowing yes. your Caribbean history and the American history more than your history here. Now, that's just wrong. Folks, come on yeah. now, my people, my yep. people. And this is where I said it always goes back, where we're, always, we're so intertwined with American media and history. To ask someone about Martin Luther King, they'll mm-hmm. give you the full bio. Yeah, we don't Probably need to know the person next door. Strong, our trade unionist here, right? Stanley Grizel. All these one there was a, there was mm-hmm. a civil rights movement here too, but that's what I'm saying, right? And you don't have to only do it in February, yeah. It's an all year thing. And if you have children, oh gosh, man, don't sit down and wait for school to teach them. Oh gosh, yep, no, yep, they're yep. not going to learn a thing, not a thing. Oh gosh, especially if you live in certain certain you know, communities, places like it's in Quebec, where certain the government area. says there's no systematic racism. All right, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. buddy. Mm-mm. Now mm. this is my final question, and I'm so excited for this question. But I'm also kind of sad because you I can never always come find me. End. Come on now, stop it. Oh, I'm gonna find you. But you, we just—it was just now. that I'm energy. Oh my god, I left high with you, <laughs> young people. It was wonderful, and, I, and you guys feel you got more from me, but I think I got more from you. Yeah, like you gave me hope that yeah, maybe it's gonna be all right after all, right? Now I hmm. need you to sit back. And then just reflect, and with the most honest thought and opinion, what does it mean to be unapologetically pat? I love when they do that sigh. It's okay to be broken. Mm. And it's okay to speak up for myself. It's okay to cry. And it's okay to rant and rave. Tell them about them bumbo when you have to, metaphorically and literally. Once I had this, this, this colleague, she kept, oh God, the aggression, the level, and she was allowed to get away with a lot of stuff. I just emailed her because I had had enough. And I backed the fuck up off of me and I pressed send. It wasn't very corporate, but there comes a time. <laughs> I haven't had a fist fight in years, but, you know, you could defend yourself, right? And I guess mm-hmm. it's, you know, that whole, I told you, it's, it's being my authentic self. I dimmed myself so many times, and I'm okay t- with my flaws and to be me. I know how to be quiet. I know how to shut up. I know how to see place. But when I have my time and I'm standing up, don't play with me. Don't ramp with me. And let me have a hat on my head. Move. Move. That is, mm-hmm. that is when I am unapologetically pat. Right, and yeah, it's a, 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 yeah. You got me this week, but next week, one one day, bucket go well. It don't always come back full. One day, the bottom will drop out, mm-hmm. and when that happens, know that you can become a next bucket. Find your audience, and do you dream? You know how many people. If you ask them, what is your dream? They cannot tell you. And that's what we went around in Montreal asking black women. Start to dream. I mean, yeah, you want to dream the six lotto numbers, but what is your dream? Yes. People don't know when people say, tell me about yourself. What is your dream? What are, you know, your top three characteristics? All of a sudden, like, you don't know yourself. Like, you haven't been living with yourself for, like, the last 26 you years much. or 55 years. But, you know what? Get back to that self that you had during COVID because I feel, I, I wish the deaths didn't occur. But the time was wonderful mm-hmm. because I felt that the merry-go-round slowed down 
So you could get on if you wanted to, or you could jump off. And I don't think we should ever yeah. forget that time or who we were as individuals. It forced you to slow Thanks. down and really, and I told people this, I'm like, one, I'm already an introverted mm. whole body. So I was good. But I'm like, the time that we had during COVID, mm. like the actual lockdown, was that time mm -hmm. for like self-reflection? Let me do like a little audit and assessment. Is this working for me? Is this really where I want to be? That's when I realized yeah. I want to go well, back to school. And you could write. To figure out what is it I want to do with my school. you could write. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. Write it down physically. Yeah. Say this is what and I want. Go after it. Yep. And we've, we've ramped up and we're moving up fast again. But that's why when the village mm -hmm. meditates, Google it. Yeah. You got to do it. Eye on the prize. Use your third eye. And do what you're doing. That's me. I know when to cry. I know when to laugh. I know when to tell them about them bumbo. That is me. And sometimes I could just mm -hmm. and shut up. Know when to be quiet. Yeah. Can't even remember the Ma Kenny Rogers. Know when to hold them. Oh, the fuck. Oh, That's yes. me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so for much for joining me. me today. Thank you. And I'm sending you people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, please I'm send them my way, people. please. Because I'm going to become a publicist again. Don't worry. A bitch ain't dead. Hey! I'm in that field now. So let me, let me, as we go done. afterwards. Oh, sorry for all you in the podcast land. Because when we turn off the camera, that's what you want to hear. Hey! So, before, you know what? Before we turn off the cameras, tell them your social medias one more time, the radio stations CKUT. where they can find you. Go ahead. Sundays live from 4 to 6 p.m. If you miss it, go in the archives. Look for Boom Boom Time. That's B H U M B H U M T Y M E. On IG, P A T underscore D I L L O N underscore M O O R E. On YouTube, the Don Mama. Because me is not the Don, but I am the Don Mama. D E D O N M A M A. And Ari Pardo's Dear Jackie. Join the Dear Jackie page on Facebook. Because that's the, where I want to see the national conversation happen. And on IG, just go Dear Jackie. Uh, CBC Gem is where it streams February 5th at 9 p.m. Oh, there's so many people. Charlene Hunt. Charlene Hunt. Oh, Charlene Hunt. And then Ivan Livingston. And just so many people and come up and visit us our, our carnival ain't as grand as caravan or toronto carnival whatever you all calling yourselves but second saturday in july come and hang such as it we still in the road and you cut you downtown come and take a little jump or join a band and so you know where come you find, find me, me come right? find all me right. don't worry book your ticket front no but come and investigate other black communities across this land called mm -hmm. Canada. Let's create a cultural corridor so you don't have to, oh, if you want to be black, you got to go to Toronto. Hey, hello. That's why Mary Angelique did bond on the people place, you know. If indeed she did bond on the people, look, you better press me. Stop. I doesn't behave right. The thing is I have the book. I still have to read it, but I don't get <laughs> <laughs> Marie Angelique, hey! <laughs> you know, before I get her in any more trouble, <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for listening. You can catch a new episode of Unapologetically Her every other Thursday 
Once again, Pat, Dylan, more ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much yeah, for joining me today. Make sure your actions are not the actions to cause another person pain. And on that note, that's how we'll end the episode.